think images are formed by the light that shines upon what we see, the grass and all that. Because if, it was, if there was no light, we wouldn't see the grass, it would be dark. Well, images are a big part of our lives, like things that you can't take part in with words, use pictures to describe what you're thinking about. Images are important because um, if we see a certain shape, then we will know what an image is, the form of its shape. We use images to make things better for us. If we didn't have images, then life would be boring. That's what I think of it. And if you take art and life, if you can't picture something in your mind, then you can't exactly understand it. I think images are important because they allow us to see our world and see what might harm us or might be beneficial to us. Hi there. Welcome to this series on light and lenses. As you might have guessed from some of the comments you've just seen, this series is all about images. But what is an image, scientifically speaking? An image is a visual representation of an object that actually looks like the object. In other words, you must be able to describe the features of the object when looking at the image. People have always been fascinated by images. Over the years, we have used what we've learned about chemistry and physics to produce images of things we normally wouldn't be able to see. For example, we can capture memories or images of important events by taking photographs. When you use a camera with a flash, the light from the flash is reflected off the object. This reflected light then travels from the object through the lens of the camera and onto the light sensitive film. When light falls onto the film, chemicals in the film are changed by the light and an image of the object forms on the film. When the film is processed, the image is preserved as a photograph. But did you know that not all images are formed by light? Have a look at this image. This is an x-ray showing an image of the bones inside a person's body. This image was formed when an x-ray machine was directed at particular parts of the body. The chemicals on the plate have reacted with the x-rays and created a white image of bones on a dark background. This is known as a CAT scan or computer axial tomography scan. Although the scan looks similar to a photograph, it has been formed in a different way. A CAT scan can only be taken using a very special machine found in hospitals. This machine uses multiple x-rays to create a detailed image of the inside of a human body. Although x-rays are very useful, they can have very harmful effects on sensitive parts of the human body, like the brain. Yet, here is an image of a person's brain. This is what is called an MRI, or magnetic resonance image. Here, instead of light or x-rays, an MRI machine has used magnetic fields to create an image of the brain. Doctors can examine this image to help them diagnose what's wrong with the patient. Now, although the images formed by x-rays and magnetic fields are certainly very interesting, the majority of images that you and I see every day are formed by light. So that is what we will focus on. In another series called Geometrical Optics, we focused on the properties of light rays. For example, we found that light rays travel in straight lines and that they can be reflected and refracted. In this series, we will take a closer look at how we have used our knowledge of how light rays behave. But first, let's look at the outcomes for today's lesson. By the end of this lesson, you should be able to identify different optical devices and describe different types of images. You should remember that we see objects because light reflects off them into your eyes. The lenses in your eyes use this reflected light to form an image of the object on your retinas. Your brain then interprets this image and we say, I can see this or I can see that. But we don't only see objects by looking straight at them with our naked eye. Sometimes, when we need to form a specific type of image, we make use of an optical device. 
For the rest of this lesson, we will take a look at how different optical devices form images using light rays and describe the properties of the images formed by the devices. The simplest optical device is this black box. Does it look familiar? It's a pinhole camera and we used a similar one in our series on geometrical optics. When we use the pinhole camera, light travels from the glowing filament of the light bulb into the pinhole and then forms an image on the screen. Look at this image carefully. The image has the same shape and color as the filament of the light bulb. It is interesting to note that in this case, the object that we identify from the image is also our light source. We call an upside down image an inverted image. Can you remember why the image is inverted? Well, we know that light travels in straight lines. So using straight lines, we can draw diagrams to represent how light rays travel from an object to the image. We call this type of diagram a ray diagram. A ray diagram of our pinhole scenario shows clearly why the image is upside down compared to the object. It also shows that light travels from the object to the image. We see the image form on the screen of the pinhole camera. We say the image has been projected or cast onto the screen. We called an image that displays these two properties, that it is inverted and can be projected onto a screen, a real image. But you should know that real images are not the only type of images that can be formed using optical devices. Previously, when we drew ray diagrams to show how light is reflected off plane mirrors to form images, we found that light travels towards the flat mirror and is reflected at the surface. This light reflected off the mirror surface enters the eye. The eye sees an image formed behind the mirror but the light does not actually travel from or to the image. This type of image is called a virtual image. Notice the image is the same way up as the object. We say it is upright. A virtual image can never be projected onto a screen because light does not actually travel to or from the image. A virtual image is always upright compared to the object. Most of us use a plane mirror every day. It forms an exact image of the object placed in front of it. Now, here's another mirror. It looks a lot like the plane mirror, but isn't quite the same. This one is slightly hollow in the middle. It's what is called a concave mirror, but to some people it's a shaving mirror. When my face is very close to the mirror, the image is about the same size as my face. Now watch what happens as I move the mirror further away. Do you see that the further away the mirror is from my face, the larger the image is that is formed in the mirror. And when I move the mirror even further away, the image suddenly becomes very strange and distorted. We say that concave mirrors form magnified images or images that are larger than the object. We use mirrors like this to make our faces big to help us do things that we need to do close up, like shaving or applying makeup. There are also other types of curved mirrors in everyday use. For example, there's the rear view mirror on a car. This enables a driver to see what's going on behind the car. This is a convex mirror. It bulges outward a little in the middle. This shape has the effect of making images seen in it smaller than they really are. In order to see as much of the road behind as possible, the images need to be made smaller. And this is why convex mirrors are used as rear view mirrors. So, we've seen that curved mirrors create an image that is either bigger than the object or one that is smaller than the object. Images that are bigger than the object are called enlarged images, while images that are smaller than the object are called reduced or diminished images. But mirrors aren't the only devices that can produce enlarged or diminished images. So let's go to Gugu in the field, who's going to show us another device that can produce similar images. Yeah. 
This is commonly called a magnifying glass. Inside this frame is a curved piece of glass called a lens. Magnifying glasses are used by people who want to make small objects bigger in order to take a closer look at them. But a magnifying glass is sometimes also called a burning glass because it can be used to focus the sun's rays onto a small area, making it very hot. Take a look. If I hold this magnifying glass in position and focus the light onto the paper, the paper will eventually catch fire. Now, back to the studio to see how a magnifying glass manages to focus the sun's rays into such a small piece of paper. <laughs> to better understand what we just saw, let's model what happened on a more manageable scale. We will use a light box with three parallel rays to represent the sun and a lens similar to the one used in the magnifying glass. Can you see that the parallel rays of light pass through the lens and then bend or converge to a focal point? This would be the bright spot we saw on the paper. Now remember, the light rays we collected outside actually came from an object, the sun. Keeping this in mind, can you think what the bright spot on the paper actually is? The bright spot is a very small image of the sun. Because it is so small, we can't really tell whether it is upright or inverted, but it was also very hot. This should give you a clue as to what type of image is formed. What do you think? Is this image virtual or real? Well, the light from the sun travels through the lens and to the actual image which forms on the paper. We know this because all the energy that falls on the lens here ends up in this tiny area where the image forms and this area gets so hot it can set the page on fire. In this example, the paper acts as a screen. So this bright spot is a real image of the sun. In today's lesson, we've seen a number of different images. Some can be described as real images, others as virtual images. But it's important to note that both of these types of images can be distorted. A distorted image is called an aberration. For example, look at what happens when I hold this bottle filled with water in front of my face. See how it distorts my face? Not pretty, hey? I want you to think about this aberration very carefully as your task for today. Is the distorted image you see when looking at a person's face through a bottle filled with water a real or virtual image? Explain your answer. Remember, a real image is one that forms when light travels from the object to the image, making it possible for the image to be projected onto a screen. A virtual image is one that can't be cast onto a screen. Light travels from the object but does not get to the image. When a person buys something like a camera, binoculars or a telescope, they expect the image to be clear and sharp. But we've just said that all lenses and image forming mirrors can produce distortions. So the people who make these instruments must spend a lot of time combining lenses and mirrors to make sure the images are sharp. In our upcoming lessons, we will take a look at how and where lenses form images and we will see how combinations of lenses and mirrors are used in particular optical instruments. Don't miss them.